Studios Original. Welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mini mailbag episode. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stetton. And I'm producer Maria. If you are not a patron already, please do- join our Patreon, patreon.com slash web crawlers. I just, I sorry, I wasn't ready and I just, <laughs> I started and I forgot where I was. Okay, so last time we said we were going to read an uh, email. The subject line, subject line was Sasquatch Butthole. Yeah. Melissa, do you want to read Sasquatch Butthole? Sure. Okay. This is from Haley. Subject is Sasquatch Butthole. Anyhow, Mm -hmm. I like it that email starts with anyhow. Mm -hmm. Dear Melissa and Maria. (laughs) Yeah. She said nothing already, but (laughs) anyways, I love your podcast and I just have so much to say. I cannot even name my favorite pod episode. But my top two are definitely Allie not knowing what country oh, no. fought in World War II. Honestly, I still don't really know. I mean, who d- did it really even happen? And Maria's scathing yeah. review because I definitely can relate to that. Also, I feel that yes. Jeb should be a guest on the show. Jeb for president 2020. You know what? That's actually a great idea. Maybe we should do a mini episode where we just interview Jeb. I'm, I'm kind of into that. Uh, I found your yeah. guys' show while driving tractor for harvest. And it literally <laughs> saved me... During my three weeks of 14-hour days inside a tractor cab by myself. I love Haley. (laughs) Uh, Since then, I've been binging hard, and I'm so close to caught up. And once I'm caught up, I'll need to be a bimbo patron so I can have more episodes. So I couldn't end this email without a couple ghost stories. I have always felt a connection to the other side, and my family says I'm crazy. I live in the house my great-great-grandparents built when they came to this country in the 1920s. And when I moved in five years ago, my aunt uncle, who also lived in the house for a time, told me that it was haunted and not to be worried because it was just my great grandfather and that he wanted to protect me, (laughs) but that he likes the house a certain way and will move things or open close or close doors until they are the way he likes it. I live alone. Oh, my God. And no one else comes to the house when I'm not home. And things are always a bit different than I left them when I went to work or when I left on vacation. I feel safe knowing he's there since I live by myself in the middle of absolute nowhere. Also, my grandfather and I were super close and he died very unexpected, unexpectedly when he was in his early 60s and I was 18. Uh, about a month after he died, my dad and I were fixing a pasture fence very early in the morning and I fell asleep in the passenger seat of the fencing truck and in my dream, I could very vividly remember waking up and seeing my grandfather as a child helping my dad, his son, help him string fence. It was the weirdest thing I have ever seen. What? I tried to convince my dad for hours of what I saw and that I was not asleep. He still doesn't believe me. But when I'm asleep, I see lots of long gone relatives, but in my present life. What? We talk and laugh and cry, and it's where I can connect with them and feel the most. Feel them the most. Maybe I'm just crazy, but oh well, it makes me feel better. No, uh, she's like a for- medium. <laughs> Thank you for the amazing show. I honestly have never laughed harder in my entire life. I'm pretty sure. Definitely my favorite podcast, and I'll be a forever listener. Sorry for the long email, Haley. Wow. <laughs> that was a I great love email. that. I, that was a great email. I think she's psychic. Yeah. That's amazing that you live in the house that your great great grandfather built. Like it's just stayed in the family. Yeah, that's pretty that's, that's cool. pretty sick. Um, should we should we play some voicemails? Because apparently we have like thirty thousand of them. Yeah, we really do. Yeah, let's play a voicemail. Uh, hey, this message is for web crawlers. This is Joran calling from uh, outside the Dallas. Joran, I'm listening to your episode, and I wanted to respond, reply. I couldn't decide which word I was going to use. <laughs> to uh, <two laughs> my. X is from Bellingham. And oh. Every time she talked oh. about it, it was like a uh, travel fails. I can't figure out what words Pitch. should come out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was it was always a big sales pitch about how wonderful uh, Bellingham is. Oh. And it's fine. So, how weird. Um, anyway, you're, you're going to, anybody who can talk about Bellingham, I think is going to talk about Bellingham. And it's <laughs> Uh, wonderful place. 
Also, somebody called in Rosie, was it? Uh, sorry about the wind. I'm walking outside. Um, and the thing with the not being able to open her eyes and the dream, my issue with sleep paralysis is the opposite, where I'll be asleep and my eyes will be closed. I have confirmation on that from my wife who was watching me do this when I went through a bout of lots of sleep paralysis. Anyway, my eyes are shut, but I would think that they're open, and I could not move my body. Um, wow. And I look around, and that's when I, I won't go too much into the details because I think I emailed you about it way back when. And I would see, you know, the shadow person and somebody whispering in my ear and all of that, but I couldn't move. And then the only way I could wake up or I, I would try to get woken up because I'd start, like, moaning. That's the only sound I could make. Uh, it would be this weird, like, Ugh. Wow. So, um, and then Jordan. I would alert my wife. To, Take me uh, out to dinner first. You know, me, me <laughs> but anyway, point being, my eyes were closed, and I thought that they were open. Isn't that crazy? Okay, <laughs> you guys, you're wild. Awesome. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Jordan. Bye. That's nuts, man. That's crazy. Being thinking that your eyes are I feel like I've done that too, where like I think I'm awake, but like I'm not. My eyes are still closed. And like I can't you can't really move. Like you're trying to move your body around. God, it's so scary. Life life is a trip. <laughs> life is weird, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Welcome to the you're Joe Rogan first. podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't life weird? Okay. Here's another voicemail. Uh, this message is for the web crawlers. I um, I feel like we're in trouble. I was listening to your most recent <laughs> mailbag episode. I know. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, what could I send in? You know, I, I, I feel like I have a lot of, like, little, I have a lot, but, you know, some, some interesting things that I could call and talk about, you know. But rather than thinking this, you guys started playing that voice, that Bane impression, and it just hurt. And it's like, <laughs> I, that movie's okay, but, like, if you wanted to hear a good Bane impression, Uh-oh. You know, like, it's like, uh oh. I actually was wondering why you'd shoot him out of a plane. I mean, I'm a little rusty, but like, come on, that's like a little bit. That's pretty good. Laugh, guys. Um, anyway, I love you, love you, love you, gals. You guys are really fun. Uh, Anyways, I'm in love with you. Um, so, yeah, thanks. Uh, love you guys. Bye. Okay, that was a pretty good one. All right. Yeah, that was something. <laughs> podcast is just gonna be bane impressions <laughs> yeah hi web crawlers this is rachel um i hi. called into your live show i don't know if you remember me i was the one who um spoke to a medium and had been getting messages from my late husband yes um that was that anyway <laughs> sorry i just had a glass of wine and i'm very nervous um anyway i wanted to talk about the stuff that happens when I sleep sometimes because you guys were talking about sleep paralysis. Oh, yeah. You had that uh, experience you talked about last week. This is what happens to me a lot of times when I sleep. And if you hear a noise in the background, I'm sorry, that's just my dog chewing on a bone. <laughs> um, cool. So a lot of times I'll wake up in the middle of the night and it'll be dark. and But I can see because my eyes just have adjusted. And I'll look I'm an and to like the I'm corner of my room yeah. or on my bedside table, and there'll just be something there that shouldn't be there. So like one time, Ugh. there was a rat what? sitting on my bedside table, and another yeah. time there was like a person, like a creepy person, standing in the corner of the room. Uh... And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh my god, what is that? What is that? What is that? And then I turn on the light, and then it's not there anymore. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is it sleep paralysis? Is it my mind? Am I still asleep? Anyway, um, thanks for the show and shout out to the Discord. It's a bunch of fun people over there. And so, la la la. <laughs> that was nice. That was a good. That was a really good one. That was like a professional one. Love that everyone. We're bringing back sleep paralysis. Yeah. Bring it up back. Maybe we should do a follow-up again. It's a hot topic. It's a hot topic. I wonder if they're going to discuss it at the debates. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Joe Biden 
No. What are your thoughts? What are you going to do about sleep paralysis? <laughs> um, okay. Next voicemail. Hey, this is a message for the Web Crawlers podcast. That's us. Uh, this is Scott from Syracuse, New York. Um, first off, I just want to start off by saying thank you for everything you guys, gals, have been doing, just putting out content constantly, just absolutely crushing it. Um, thank you. You know, it, it honestly helps a lot to have, you know, with everything we, the whole world's been dealing with, just being able to have that, you know, 45-minute release of just listening to a podcast is honestly helpful sometimes mentally to some people. Um so basically, thank you for that. And I just kind of wanted to get into something quick. I just wanted your quick opinion on something. Um, kind of put into a not so great situation that I really don't want to be in. Um, Uh-oh. and I feel forced into and I don't Uh-oh. like it and it kind of is scary. So me and my oh girlfriend, my uh, have been dating for a little over four years and our relationship didn't start off great. After about a year, um, come to find out she was like, talking to this other guy and then she ended up cheating on me so we broke up oh. for a few months and then uh. we ended up getting back together but it's been about almost three years since then and I'm still kind of just not over it <laughs> and she still uh, never really apologized about it and oh. um, recently she's been going through a lot of things personally she lives at home still and dealing with issues at home and um, basically she's getting kicked out of her house now she wants me to basically move in with her i'm not financially or emotionally ready for that because we just don't have a great relationship and um she kind of is like manipulating me into doing this and i don't feel comfortable doing it (laughs) and i don't know exactly how i should approach it because i've tried approaching it in like a safe and cautious way being like i don't really want to do this i don't think either one of us is emotionally or financially ready for this. And she feels as though she has to do this and basically keeps telling me, you know, we're in this together. We have to do this. You kind of need to be there for me. And I don't know. I just, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, like she, she's someone who I genuinely love, but I just don't know if I see myself marrying this person ever in the long run. So I don't know. I don't know what I should do, but <laughs> that's a lot. It's heavy. I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> I don't know where to turn. Uh, obviously, I don't have a therapist, so uh, <laughs> any, any insight would be helpful. So um, I appreciate your thoughts. I appreciate your time, and keep on trucking. Hong Kong. <laughs> oh, thanks. This is like a Big Ones crossover episode. Yeah, it sure is. I love it. I would love to start answering advice. Here's my thoughts. Let's hear it. Um, One, what makes you feel like you need to stay in this relationship? Because so far I've heard no positives. Yep. Um, Two, uh, as you said, you are not married to this woman. um, And it takes two people in a relationship whose needs need to be met. And you also have to know how to meet your needs for yourself. So it seems like you need to establish a boundary. If you don't want to do something, then you don't have to do it in this relationship. Three, you've said ultimately that you're you're not happy in this relationship. You're not able to get over what happened in the past. She hasn't apologized for it. And that also you don't see yourself having a future together. Mm -hmm. So if she wants to move to the next step and you don't want to move there, nor do you see a future, uh, it seems like you maybe are at a crossroads where you have to decide if you want to keep dating or maybe you need to break up. Which is not fun, but that might be something that you need to consider if maybe that this is a point in your relationship where you actually have to move on from each other. And sometimes, you know, like love isn't really enough. Like you can love someone, but know that the relationship isn't right for you. And it might be the best thing for her to know that like the relationship needs to end now so she can work on getting her own place and, you know, establishing a new life for herself. Because if you guys were to move in with each other and then a few months from now or a year from now, you're like, actually, you're not the one for, for me and I'm going to move out. And now you're on your own. That Just think that that's maybe if you do have love for her, that's not really um, of benefit or of service to her or of you because then you're going to have to uproot your life. I wow. think like maybe a breakup is in order, <laughs> to be honest. That was like really good professional advice. Well, that's because she's a professional. I, I know. A life coach. <laughs> that's like exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, sure, Melissa. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I like, yeah, yeah. I, like I was when you when you look thing. at it objectively, that's when you see it from an outsider's point of view. I think that you're like, yeah. Mm. And I think that because she's getting kicked out of her house, I think she's just like, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna my boyfriend or this yeah. guy that I'm dating. I think she's just gonna be using you for a place to live. She's in fight or flight. Yeah, yeah, she's in fight or flight mode. And also, it's like, why is she being kicked out of her house? Maybe she has some yeah. personality traits that aren't really conducive to having healthy relationships with others. Yeah, if you move in with her, it's just going to get worse. You have to look at the underlying pattern of like, why have you put up with this relationship if you're not happy yeah. in it? And you're not a and and because if you do break up with this girl, you're going to get into another relationship like you have to heal those wounds in yourself. And by yeah. the way, exactly. I know who Scott is because Scott does like artwork for I think he's done artwork for web crawlers and for <gasps> oh big ones. and Scott's a hunk so let's not yeah no look look him up uh, okay Scott you're a talented hunk so we got to work on um self-esteem stuff self-esteem stuff self-worth boundaries like own yours and and know what you deserve in a relationship um and just like find a girl who celebrates you yeah yeah you cherish the woman you're with and allow her to treat you like a king yes <laughs> <laughs> like maria is craig your king he's my your, king. your donkey kong king. Yes, he's yeah. my king he's my he's my king and i'm his i'm his princess you're his troll under a bridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm his jester. He's my king and I'm his jester. <laughs> yeah, man. That's how it's got to be. My dad is my king. So <laughs> that's just how it goes. <laughs> and I'm his and little Asher princess, Asher is baby. your prince. Asher's your prince. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, man. So, Scott, hopefully that was beneficial to you. Yeah. Um, so we got a, a voicemail from some uh, uh, someone named Nicole who left a two-parter voicemail, but we couldn't understand it because it was uh, th the connection was wrong so nicole if you want to call back it seems like it was yeah really please cool call back story. with your story yeah it was just choppy. yeah and it seemed it seemed like what you had to tell us was spooky so we definitely want to hear it please yes Hey, this is for web crawlers. It's uh, Daniel. Um, okay, uh, I'm horny in, already, you know, Daniel. It's Daniel. <laughs> it's Daniel from the, the Discord. Shows, um, yeah. So uh, I wanted to call in today. Oh, sorry, really I treated quickly. you that way. That was disrespectful. So fast, even faster than I normally <laughs> do stuff. Um, so there is a legend in Maryland of a of a woman named Mall Dyer. M O L L Mall. Dyer. Um, Dyer. She was from Leonardtown, Maryland, which is a historic town. Will you pause it for a second? Yes. Daniel has a great voice. Oh, no, it's the best. It's so good. I'm sorry for saying it made me horny because Daniel's a friend of the pod and that was inappropriate. <laughs> but like, he has a great voice. It's it's so soothing. Like, it's such a good like story yes. teller voice. Like, it's an ASMR voice. Like, yes. I feel it in my spine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it does something to my, literally to my spine. Yeah. No, I, f I feel you. It's visceral. Yeah, it is. Okay, you can start playing. <laughs> as Seymour Town, which arguably better name. Uh, it's been the county seat oh. for St. Mary's County since the early 18th century. So just on the outskirts of this town, there is this woman who lived there named Amal Dyer, and many people would go to her to be cured of various ailments, paying Ooh. her with food and herbs, um, but most people wouldn't openly discuss it. But it was like, you know, kind of an open secret in the colony of Maryland where, um, you know, even... So religious freedom really wasn't a thing at all back then. But within even different Christian sects, like Maryland had this very um, challenging history of like switching from being ruled by Catholics. There was like a Protestant revolution at one point. So we've really had our struggles since Europeans arrived in uh, the land that is now Maryland. Um, anyway, so they didn't want to talk about anything that could be construed as witchcraft or anything outside of normal Christian practices. So in 1697, a harsher than usual winter struck the area and a lot of people died of the flu and other ailments. And all of a sudden, Mal Dyer, who people were, were happy to go to for help when they needed it, um, was left alone. 
uh, and became the easiest person to blame for all of these sudden maladies that were affecting the town. Mm. So the town, of course, decides to declare her a witch um, and really let her have it. And they make sure that they that she suffers from the cold. So they burn her house down so that she has nowhere to go. And they just presumed that she died. Um, But the legend is that unbeknownst to the town folks, she heard them coming and escaped into the woods and they found her body there three days later, kneeling over a large Ooh. rock with one hand on the rock <gasps> and one hand frozen up in the air as if she was begging for mercy. Oh God. And the townsfolk decided that her hand had been in the air because she was holding it up to, you know, bring a curse upon the town. Oh. So it confirmed their suspicions because oh. there's, you know, that's how stupid everyone is. Um, <laughs> So there's no definitive historical record of Maldire. I've looked into this a little bit, but the legend's been passed around. And there are a few odds and ends that could add up to something. There is an immigration record. Uh Uh-oh, got cut off. Now now I'm going to apologize. Is there a part two? Because he did send a part two, but it was deleted by me. (laughs) Maria! Maria! Maria. It was a big accident. It just happened. And Daniel, <laughs> this is maybe something where you can call into the live show next week and finish your story. Is the live show this be... week? First Friday, right? Oh, yeah. No, it's this week. Oh, it is this week. Yeah. Friday oh, the 2nd. Wow. wow. October yeah. 2nd. So, oh, my God. Daniel, <laughs> you call in with the rest of the story. That's a cliffhanger for the ages. Wow. That is, what a cliffhanger. Yeah, seriously, dude. There's a voice or um, email we got about a troubled teen school oh. experience. Yes, I saw that. Let, let's read that. Read that. I like when Melissa reads the voicemails because she is a better voice. Uh, I don't know. I think I have a crazy voice. <laughs> um, <laughs> subject is troubled teen school experience. Hi, guy. I love your podcast and everything about the troubled teen. <laughs> Hi, guy. And everything about the troubled teen industry is true. Hello, sir or madam. Hello, sir or madam. (laughs) I went a few days after my birthday when I turned 15. I was taken because I was defending myself from my stepdad's abuse, but I was the black sheep, so it was my fault. And I was the one who was out of control, even though I was a good, uh, even though I was a goody two shoes. Anyway, your parents. Fuck that shit, dude. Yeah. Uh, your parents can pay extra to get you kidnapped and taken to the school or drive you to the school themselves. Mine drove me there. Oh, my God. It's like a perk. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> For an extra $2,000. It's we'll like guacamole costs as- extra. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Guacamole sounds so good. My parents drove me there, tricking me by saying we were going to lunch in Mexico and spending the day there. Instead, they drove me into these big gates. <laughs> That's so weird. I just talked about guacamole and then she says Mexico. (laughs) Oh, my God. That is weird. That is weird. So mine drove me there, tricking me to say we're going to lunch in Mexico and spending the day there. Instead, they drove me into these big gates. The gates shut and my parents took out a plastic tub of clothes and essentials and left me. What? No one told me what was going on. So I thought I was left to be adopted. My school was called Casa by the Sea in Baja, California. They do oh search God. you and make you change. Okay, I did not read this email before I said what I said. About the guacamole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you like hung up on that? I don't know. I don't know. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> what a coincidence. You brought out guacamole. <laughs> they do search you and make you change in front of them into a uniform. Someone stole my shoes oh my on the first day. Uh, my school was also run by Mormons. Okay, so in the Reddit, uh, when I was reading the troubled teen industry, they were speaking of a correlation between the Mormons and troubled teen. And I assume a lot of, it's because a lot of the schools are in Utah, but I don't know. Uh, One thing they forced us to do every few months was take these creepy all-day seminars. So the Mormons paid people to come into the school and yell at us and tell us what shitty kids we were and tell each other. Scared silly. Yeah, what horrible people they are. Most kids cried the whole time, but I was just acting my way through it. We could only speak Spanish, could never talk to our family, took showers with no doors. They watched us the whole time. We could only write letters that they read before they were sent out. Even in the middle of the night, we couldn't go to the bathroom without permission. They did force us to eat. And if we didn't eat all the food, we had to sit there the entire day. It's also true, if we got gifts or food, we had to eat it all within the day and were forced to throw the rest away. 
Uh, Yes, there was tons of abuse from getting beat to getting locked in dog cages to walking a track for days on end without water to never being allowed to go to the hospital to get help and finally sitting and staring at the wall for the entire day while being forced to listen to self-help tapes. Uh, They said they thought we would run away if we went to the hospital, but really they knew they would get fucked if we were out and able to call the police and our parents So one girl was walking around with a broken foot for over a year. What? What the fuck? Also, they would make us clean the school every week. We had to walk in line everywhere and never speak unless given permission. Uh, We could only talk to each other in English for 30 minutes to one hour each day in group therapy. Sometimes in the middle of the night, they would wake all of us up and make us go outside and stand in lines for hours until they said we could go back to sleep. People would always pass out under the ground when it happened. This is crazy. I never went outside the walls for the seven months I was there. What? When we did have school time, I would tell my teacher to please help me get me out of here. The school was eventually shut down by the Mexican police and federales. That's how bad our school was. But this was in California or this is in Mexico? I think she said Baja, Baja, California. Baja, California. Uh, that's how bad our school was. The Mormon pieces of shit are not in jail. They are actually employed and still working. I was there seven months. It cost my family over $30,000. Some kids have been in there almost three years. Some parents dumped their kids there, and the only way out was turning 18, unless your family came to save you. Yeah, I guess if once you turn 18, you can be like, I'm out. Uh, When my family randomly showed up to get me, I told them what happened, and they were shocked. Yeah, they said the school told them how fun it was and that we would go to the beach and in town all the time. After they found out what happened, I never had rules again. I had nightmares for about a year after I left, but that was it. Luckily, I wasn't too affected because I acted my way through each day and didn't retain any of the brainwashing. One thing that did happen was my personality changed from shy to outgoing because I lost seven months of my life in a Mormon Mexican prison. Hi to anyone else <laughs> that went to Casa by the Sea. Love you, web crawlers. A. Hey. Holy, Holy shit. Casa I want to Google by Casa the by the Sea. sea. Got to give this one a Google. I mean, like, honestly, that's a great name because it sounds like a glorious, like, hotel. Yeah. Casa by the Sea Survivors. It's in Ensenada. Opened in 1998 by Dace Goulding. Horror at Casa by the Sea. Oh, my God. It's all these, like, survivor boarding school nightmare School run like a jail. 2004, it was shut down. Holy shnikes. <laughs> oh, it's all run by men. All run by men. Dace Goulding, Jason Finnelson, Jade Robinson, Luke Hallows, Miguel Rodriguez. <gasps> Convicted murder. Michael James Perry, who was executed in Texas, had been enrolled in Casa by the Sea, but left in the year 2000. Whoa. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad you escaped and you're not too fucked up from it. Yeah. After the closure, U.S. Congressman George Miller said this was the ninth closing of facility owned or managed by the Worldwide Association of Specialty Programs. The motto was a foundation for success. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's weird, man. That's why scared silly is going to be is going to I did. The more I think about it, the more it just makes sense to like, let's like get these teens out of their heads through comedy yeah well this is weird what are you looking at Allie? what do you see (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm like beautiful minding over here (laughs) there's just a website where it's just it says the longitude and latitude of casa (laughs) by the sea and i just think it's interesting that there's just a whole website dedicated to the longitude and latitude of casa by the sea oh like that it has to do with like it's like in a hell mouth or something like that yeah i mean i don't know yeah i'm glad i'm so glad that you're safe i'm so glad that you're out of there the pictures of this place if you google image it look i mean it looks like a prison there's like yeah there's bunk beds really stark bunk beds one two three four five six seven it looks like there's about eight to ten to a room you know do you follow jenny pentland pentland on twitter Mm-mm. I do not, but I, I saw that you retweeted something. She's Roseanne's daughter. Oh, she is? Yes. She's like a she, comedian she and follows, a writer. She follows me. She's really funny, but she just tweeted recently. Remember in the episode, I was like, Roseanne's kids went there to like yeah. these 
She And she just tweeted. Yeah, she follows me. I don't know if she just started following. Oh, yeah. I had a full breakdown seven years ago due to CPTSD from years spent in the troubled teen industry when I was 13 to 18. The industry is still alive, though many, including one I attended, campuses have been shut down for abuse. They've rebranded, renamed, and reopened. I've talked about it on here for the years, and I'm glad it's finally getting some exposure thanks to Paris Hilton's documentary on YouTube. I haven't watched it yet. I'm pretending it's because I'm too busy. For profit, healthcare, mental health care prison is predatory. When I was 14, after 11 months of inpatient lockup, average stint was three weeks. I demanded to know if I was insane. How should I be there 10 times longer than anyone else? A staff member finally told me it was because I had millions a year mental health policy. <gasps> I was gold. Oh. I should, maybe I'll DM her. Maybe we can, she'll be, maybe she'll, um, be open to being a guest and kind of tell us about what that industry is like. Damn. Yeah, it's crazy. Does she follow you? Uh, I think so. Jenny Pentland. Yeah. Damn it. I just wanted to be special for once in my life. <laughs> you are special. You're special. On that note, uh, thank you guys for listening no, today. No, Allie, we have um, to listen to the other voicemails because I already deleted them and then they're going to get lost in the shuffle. Okay. okay oh my okay. God. Okay. You're There's, right. Okay. Let's okay. play. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> Hi, this is a message for the web callers. Uh, my name's Helen. I'm calling from the UK. I just want to say I love the show. Uh, love the Discord. Shout out to everyone in the Discord. <laughs> I also like Helen's so voice. I thought I'd just say hi and loving you guys. Yeah, honk honk. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the UK. Yeah, seriously. Love it over there. Hi, this is a message for the web callers. It's Becky from the UK. I've left one voice note before. I've been in the Discord a bit and stuff too. Um, so I just wanted to say that I've just been on a holiday, a two week road trip in Scotland, which was amazing. Went to Loch Ness, didn't see Ooh. the monster, quite disappointed. <sighs> also went to Isle of Skye, didn't see any fairies, went to the fairy poles, all that, no fairies, also <laughs> disappointed. No fairies. Um, but yeah, I wanted to bring up and say that I came home. Finally got on the Spotify and I could see that I had six episodes that I need to catch up on. So I'm just having the best day ever, just washing the piles and piles of holiday clothes mm-hmm. I need to get through. That's not for fun, but, um, but mainly I've got two. I've got six episodes to listen to, which is awesome. Also, um, I'm also kind of sad that Jeb didn't mention Ali. Ali, you deserve a voice note from Jeb. So Jeff, if you listen to this, bring up and leave Ali a very own voice now. She deserves it. I awesome. got one. You go ahead and do that. Um, also, like I said about the Discord, the, when I was in Edinburgh on my road trip, I was walking through this graveyard. Um, sorry, I'm lying. It wasn't Edinburgh. It was Glasgow. Anyway, so I was walking through <laughs> this awesome graveyard in Glasgow, and there was this huge like gravestone. It was massive, like a chamber, and it had like like kind of like a letterbox type opening near the top of it like it's not too high high enough that you'd have to stand on your tiptoes to have a look and it just looked like the creepiest thing ever and i walked past it and i said to my boyfriend i was like chris how much would anyone have to pay Ooh. to look in that and he said not any amount of money i would look in there <laughs> and it was like day you to look in there and i was like no so I took a photo of it. I put it in the Discord and thought, guys, how much money would you have to get paid to have a look in that? <laughs> and about three or four people instantly replied and was like, I'd look for free. I'd, I'd look like, no, I'll go have a look and take a picture. And I was like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, kind of said something about, uh, you follow. Okay. And then, okay, and then she gets cut off. And then I didn't delete this one. So here you hey, go. Hey, Becky. Oh, thank I, you. I got cut off. Um, I don't actually have anything else extra to say. I just <laughs> don't want to be rude. Because I'm like, I just want to. So, yeah. I'm saying all done. Um, so, love you guys. Love all of you. Just don't forget our voicemail. Mama, mama, mama. Bye bye. Wow. Bye. What a cutie. Um, Jeb did leave me a voicemail last time. He left yes, me a very he nice did. voicemail he telling did. me I was special he did. Um, <laughs> and deserving of love. So sometimes, sometimes do you ever look at Piggles or your cats and you, you want to squeeze so hard? I try to hug my cats all the time. So cute. And they get so mad. They're like, and I'm like, cutie, you love it. 
We just want to Sometimes squeeze Sometimes I look at Usher and I have to grind my teeth because yeah. he's so cute. I just want to squeeze him. him. You want to squeeze yeah, him? You don't want to kill him? Got, I'm going to kill you. You're so cute. You're like Lenny in Of, wow. mice, of, of mice and Men squeezing yeah. the rabbit. It's like in they that punch cute. drunk love scene. Remember when they're, when she's like, I love you so much. I just I want to bash your face in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a real thing, apparently, called cute aggression. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sure is. Sure Darn is. Um, okay. Well, anyways, is that it? Yeah. Well, we've got our live show on Friday. So you guys. They're actually already talking about it in the Discord. I just opened the Discord for a Ooh. second and they're like, hey, guys, the live show is Friday. And then I just commented, sure is. You guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell your friends i mean tell your family tell your enemies let's your get family this, let's get, yeah tell your family <laughs> what tell your mom. what is on friday um <laughs> but it's friday at 5 p.m pacific time mm-hmm. yes no i think we usually do six or i can do five i mean no it's we fine. usually do f- we do five. five. Oh, we do oh because it's 8 p.m. East Coast time. Yeah, you got to get... Oh, you're right. You're right. You guys are right. Yeah, so we're letting everyone... <laughs> it's not too late, not too early. It's just right. We're just three, right. Time. Three little Prime bears time. in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So All right. we'll see you well, guys then. Yeah, we'll post information soon. Okay, well, thank you guys for listening. Um, and I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I'm Maria producer Blasucci. <laughs> Great kind of producer. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye. An Elio's original. Powered by ACAS.